Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to look at scatter plots today. A scatter plot is a graph like this where you graph data in points, and you don't really connect the dots, it's just a scattering of data. Um, here's an example of a graph I came up with, I just made this up, but um, I showed studying in minutes on the left and a grade along the right. All right. Because there are two pieces of information, the studying and the grades, being plotted together here in this, we call this a bivariate. Um, just means that there's two variables, the studying and the grade. And so we look at scatter plots and we ask ourselves certain questions. We try and analyze um, what we see in this scatter plot. So what are some of the conclusions you come to looking at this scatter plot? Are there any patterns that you notice? Where are the clusters? Are there any outliers? And is it linear or nonlinear? These are four questions that I'm going to ask with every set, every scatter plot that we look at. And just to kind of explain what some of this vocabulary means or what it is, I'll go ahead and answer them for you on this one. So when I look for um, patterns, I look and I see that this kind of has an increasing pattern. You see, it starts out pretty low and it increases. Or in other words, um, the more time we spend studying, the higher the grade tends to be. There are some clusters in here in the middle. Um, most of the grades tend to be between 60 and 80. And there are some outliers, in other words, some some that sort of stick out, like this person here who spent zero minutes um, studying and got a grade of 10%. That's very abnormal to get a grade that low. Also, this person who spent 10 minutes studying got a grade of 100. Again, sort of abnormal. Those are your outliers. They're the, the pieces of data that don't really fit the pattern, but they're there. And they are part of life. Um, you'll have outliers that are kind of the exception to the rule. With this, um, with this specific, I'm going to draw a line here using, I'll use blue, why not? With this specific graph, there tends to be a pattern that moves up like this. Now, because there's a pattern of moving up, we would say this is a nonlinear because it doesn't really form a straight line. When we try and draw a line of best fit, you try and make it hit as many points as you can have an even number below the the line as above the line and in this case this would definitely be a non-linear correlation between all of this data here it tends to increase pretty steeply um, starting around this point um, but there's definitely you know if you spend zero minutes studying you're not guaranteed to get zero but um, if you were to draw a straight line it might kind of come down like this um, but there's not really a straight line. And I'll show you some linear correlations here in just a little bit. Here's an example of our linear correlation. So this is the miles driven versus the number of hours of driving um, that we have here. Um, what patterns do you notice again? Where are the clusters? Are there any outliers? And is this linear or nonlinear? So I'm going to show that it is linear by drawing something called a line of best fit. A line of best fit goes right about the middle, shows the same, about the same above and below, tries to hit as many points as you can. You notice that um, it's about like this. The outliers or the exceptions to the rules, this guy here maybe um, up top um, drove four hours and drove 125 miles. Most people probably don't drive that quick. Um, and then some people are driving a little bit slower, that's fine. Outliers don't discredit our data, they just are outliers. There's something that we have to recognize. The clusters tend to be around that, um, around this line. There's a couple of clusters right around here. People driving two, two hours drive about this much, three hours about there. But um, there aren't like huge clusters in this. More we would be looking at the outliers and the line of best fit. Also, when a line increases or goes up when we move from left to right, it's called a positive correlation. So the more number of hours you drive, the farther you drive. It's a positive correlation. Now let's look at this one. The money in your wallet versus the time spent shopping. Do you notice any patterns? 
it's decreasing, right? Um, where are the clusters? Are there any outliers? And then is this linear or nonlinear? I would say this one is definitely linear again. It's a stark decrease. Um, we would call this a negative correlation. Um, the longer you spend shopping, the less money you would have in your wallet. There it is. Again, look for clusters, look for outliers, exceptions to the rules, and make some conclusions based on the scatter plot. I'm going to look at one more scatter plot. Um, how long did you root for your team in minutes and what did your team score? Are there any patterns for this? Are there any clusters, any outliers, and is it linear or nonlinear? With this one, it's a little bit tough. This is what we call no correlation. There doesn't really seem to be an increase. You could spend lots of time um, rooting for your team, and your team could still lose, or your team could do really well. And there's not really a correlation between that. Um, sorry to disappoint you, but um, how long you spend rooting for your team doesn't usually impact um, what actually happens. So just want to point that out. There is a no correlation. We could draw a line of best fit that sort of fits in there, but if it doesn't really have an up or downward slope, it's again non, um, it can be linear, this one, or we could say it's not really linear. There's not really a strictly good line that would fit in there. So we would say there's no correlation between this data. There's not really a pattern here. Um, it's just sort of a splattering of, of information and data. So that is the lesson on scatter plots. We should be able to construct a scatter plot given some data and interpret it. Um, again, that bivariate word in there that you see just means that there's two pieces of information we're comparing. Um, time versus money in your wallet or or whatever amount of miles driven anyway here are your common core an anchor and your pennsylvania eligible content i hope that lesson was helpful for you have a wonderful day